What is going on, everybody? If you watched my last video, you know that I'm doing a brand new series for the month of June called A Lesson in Queer History, where I'll be talking about a different LGBTQ plus historical figure that you may or may not know. And this one happens to be one of my favorites. Now when you think of rock and roll, you probably think of legends such as Chuck Berry and Elvis Presley, and you probably think that they were the ones who originated rock and roll music. What if I was to tell you that that may not exactly be the case? And that a queer black woman may have had a huge role in being a pioneer of the rock and roll music genre of which we all enjoy today. Because today we're talking about Sister Rosetta Tharp. Rosetta Tharp was born as Rosetta Newbin in Cotton Plant, Arkansas in 1915. Her mother, Katie Bell Newbin, was a preacher, singer, mandolin player, and evangelist over at the Church of God in Christ, GIC for short, who played a huge role in influencing Rosetta to, you know, pursue music in her life. The church itself encouraged people, especially women, to pursue musical expression through dance and song and instrument learning, and Rosetta was encouraged by her mother at the age of four to sing and play guitar with the church. And honey, she did a good job at the age of four. She was a child prodigy, if you will. Mozart who? At the age of six, she was billed as a singing and guitar-playing miracle all across the South in her mother's troop of traveling evangelical music players. I did not have that title when I was six years old. My title was Quietest Kid in Classroom. And look where I am now. It's a great how things work out. In the mid-20s though, Rosetta and her mother both moved up to Chicago where they continued playing with other Church of God and Christ Kugik churches in the area. And this in turn caused Rosetta to gain some fame as a black female guitarist, which wasn't really common back then. She was also still a child, so that's really good too. Once again, I did not have talent when I was a kid. I could barely run when I was a kid. In 1934 though, Rosetta married Thomas Thorpe, a preacher from the Church of God and Christ churches across the nation, and even though the marriage didn't really last long, she however did keep his last name and maneuvered it into her soon-to-be stage name known as Sister Rosetta Tharp. And it only gets better from there. In 1938, she moved all the way to New York City and joined Decca Records where she released her first hit song, Rock Me. That same year in 1938, she performed at Carnegie Hall and this is when everything started to happen. At her performance, it was dubbed as controversial and revolutionary because she played a whole bunch of gospel songs with some blues and jazz musicians while she still was playing her guitar in her unique way that had, you know, interesting melodic, 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 it had an interesting melody, and you know, it, um, it was new to everybody. This unique style would soon to be known as rock and roll. With her performance, she managed to shock and awe the audience with her unique style of music playing because rock wasn't a thing back then yet. She made a name for herself with this whole unique sense of playing and started playing at a whole bunch of different venues all throughout New York City such as Harlem's own famous Cotton Club. The 1940s happens and Rosetta is busy at work. She's making music, she's performing at some churches and some cafes. She ends up becoming one of two African American gospel singers to make the discs for the American troops across the sea during World War II. That is a huge thing to do. In 1945, the Rosetta keeps on changing the game with her song Strange Things Happening Every Day crossing over into the race charts soon to be known as the R&B charts and makes it to the number two spot and this whole thing becomes a model for early rock and roll. In 1947 while she was performing at a concert in an arena somewhere, I didn't get the name of it, she pulls a 14-year-old from the stage known as Little Richard Penniman, who soon becomes to be known as Little Richard, who, from this encounter with Rosetta, he decides that he wants to become a performer. She is life-changing. Ah, I love her. Rosetta once again married in 1951 to Russell Morrison. This marriage though was quite different and honestly goals because it was elaborate. It was at the Griffith Stadium. 25,000 people paid to go see her perform at her wedding in her wedding dress and she did it and when it all ended, fireworks came out of nowhere. That is wedding goals. 
However, things go a little sour in 1953. In 1953, Rosetta and fellow gospel singer Marie Knight decide to do a duet secular album together. And this was a bad idea. The album was a commercial failure and they were condemned by their fans ever since. The two disbanded and neither received the popularity that they once had. Through the rest of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Rosetta keeps a very low profile and keeps on performing and doing tours all around the US and Europe as well with such legends such as Muddy Waters. So she's keeping busy. However, on October 9th, 1973, Rosetta ends up passing away from complications from a stroke that she had a few days prior in her home in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's not to say her death wasn't in vain. Through Rosetta's music influences and stylings, because she was basically the godmother of rock and roll and blues and gospel and everything, she ends up influencing so many artists out there from Chuck Berry, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, Isaac Hayes, Aretha Franklin, Tina Turner, and even Meatloaf. Yeah. Unfortunately, Rosetta becomes a little bit lost in history and people don't exactly give her the credit that she deserves for what she did to help rock music get off the ground. Over the years, small notions of respect and significance do come up through the cracks. She ends up getting a stamp made up after herself. There's a documentary about her as well. In 2007, she was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame. And more recently, she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as an early influence in 2017. Don't know why it took them this long to do it. But wait, you're probably asking yourself, how in the hell is she a queer icon when I didn't mention anything about her sexuality? Well, I got you. So while it was never explicitly said out loud, loud by Rosetta, she was noted to be a bisexual slash secret lesbian according to some of her close friends. She lived as open as she could back then with her bisexuality, mm, but you know, it was also the 50s and beyond, which didn't mean that she could be very open and honest about it. Even though she was married three times, close friends and sources of her said that those marriages were shams and were made just for her own personal safety and the sake of her career, which given the circumstances is believable. Like one of her fellow musicians though did say in 1951 she was kind of caught in bed with two other women during her honeymoon tour after her third marriage to that Russell Morrison guy. So you know, it's pretty cool. So if you didn't know anything about Rosetta Tharp until now, I'm really hoping that you paid attention and you now realize a little bit as to why she's called the godmother of rock and roll. If you want to learn more about her, I have a whole bunch of articles and links located in the info box below that you can go ahead and read. But that is it for my A Lesson in Queer Stories session this week. I have two more videos in my series coming up throughout the month until the end of June, and you should keep an eye on them because they'll be out every Friday until June ends. And after that, we'll figure out what happens next. Hope you enjoyed this. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe as well. I make videos and I put them out on Fridays because I'm getting better at this. As always, make good choices and make interesting choices. Live adventurously because it's your life and not mine. And I'll see you next time.